Okay, welcome to this channel. If you're into photography and would like to know more about lighting, then you came to the right place. Today we will shoot Box of Salt from England. This is hard light, super, super, super hard light. The hardest light you can get. And hard light, as we know, is when the shadow edges are razor sharp. That's a hard light. Super trendy. So let's do this. I posted this image under the community tab here on YouTube and also in the Facebook group that we have. And I asked you to guess the lighting. Many of you thought I used a bare bulb flash and I did not. I used a projection attachment, but you can use a bare bulb and get almost exactly the same result. Almost, very, very close. Or it depends a bit on your space. We will come to that later. First, let's shoot it the way I shot it yesterday when I posted this image. And we have another guy over here, but we will come to that soon. Okay, so let's start with the projection light that I used for this image. And uh, then we will move on to more affordable way, the bare flash method. So let's start. How do we start? Well, I need to turn on the flash. Now it's on the projection light and this guy will shoot like this. Boom. Yes, this is what we get. As you see, the background surface Baby blue, midnight blue. I just made that up. They do not look the same as in the photo that I posted. It was green. I don't have green, even though green is my favorite color. But we will fix this in post. So, as we see, the uh, edge is super razor sharp. And also, the great thing about a projection attachment to your flash is that the shadow will be equally dark there is no random fill light going on with the uh, light bouncing around in the room you know i like to do it like this because i can control the shadow the contrast of the shadow by adding another flash of course you can use something to bounce fill card a bit you see we're lifting up the shadow this will work to bounce back light, but I feel that it's better to use uh, another flash, a super soft light, like I always do, bouncing it in the ceiling, and then we get a soft light, and that shadow edges will be so wide, so there will not be any double shadowing going on. You sh should avoid double shadows. Right now, it's both soft, I guess, and hard, because this small light source, this bulb, will hit the scene, but it will also bounce in the ceiling, and we will get the soft light, but also a hard light. Let's turn it on. Boop. Now it's on, let's take a shot. What will happen with the shadow? There you go. It's uh, filled up with a soft light. But if we look close here, you see on this side, maybe it's hard to see, but there is a shadow going on. Maybe we can take down the power or we can just be rough and take down the ISO. Maybe it will, yes, now you will see it better. You see there's a shadow. So what is going on? Well, like I told you, this product will see this small light and that will create a shadow. Don't care so much about this. This is from the sun, from the windows. This will not be shown in the shot. This small light source will create a shadow going this way. And then we'll have the main light, the protection light, so will create this shadow. And also we will have this bounce by this flash, bounce in the ceiling down, lifting up, the darkness of the shadows. This one and that one on that side. So 
try to avoid double shadows. Or maybe this will be the next trend. Double shadows going on everywhere. Well, you can really play with this. Multi shadows going in different directions. But in this case, it looks like a mistake. How to fix this? Well, with uh, some kind of reflector. This is a wide zoom. We just put this on. And then the product will not be hit by the direct flash bulb or doom. Now it, the shadow will only get this soft light. Double shadows, gone. And if you feel this is still too dark, this shadow, then we can just up the power. You see, we lower the contrast. We can go up even more, maybe a bit too much. Go back one. So, this is why I love to do it this way. Instead of uh, having some bounce card, trying to get closer or you need to have something very shiny to increase the bounce back and everything. It's, this is so convenient to have another flash and you have total control of the shadow. Maybe it's a bit too bright now. Let's go down. Yes, let's go for this one. Projection light, this is how we can do it. Boom, control with an extra flash, lift up the, decrease the contrast. Now, let's compare with a bare bulb instead. That can be interesting to see if it's possible to create something similar. So let's shut this guy off and also shut off the projection flash and put on the bare bulb. You see the center, this is just the modeling light, the guide light to see where we should aim the light in the center. And then we have this omega shaped flash tube and we will only shoot with this flash tube now. Okay, so now we have the bare bulb flash going on over there and it's exactly at the same location as the projection light. So let's try this one, see what happens. A bit bright, you can take down the power of the flash of course, but I saw 100. Something like that. By the way, you should never do it like me, adjusting the brightness with the ISO. You should always stay at the lowest ISO and then you adjust the power of the flash, okay? Just now that I'm lazy, I don't want to go over there, so okay. So this is the protection light, and then we have the bare, bare bulb. Almost the same. It's a bit softer edge, tiny softer. And also, when you look in the center there, with the bare bulb, you will get a bit random light play going on because this will bounce everywhere in the room you know going back and filling up this shadow with random light you have no control that's why it it doesn't look as nice as the projection light you have a bit in the center darker and then it softens out it looks a bit rough but we almost almost get the same razor sharp edge, almost. But we can do better. One thing we can do is to point the flash up in the ceiling. We would do it like this, up. So now I'm shooting straight up in the ceiling over there. Why? Well, this flash tube, when we're aiming at the object, it's round. Now, when we do it like this, up in the ceiling, it will be so much tinier, you know. So let's take a shot and see what happens. Because now the light source is smaller than before. So we should get a, a bit sharper edge. What do you say? I think it looks softer. Well, we get dark, and then there is 
a tiny bit there, but it's still a bit random, this light, because the light is bounce, still bouncing around in the room, but it's slightly different way as before, so they're quite similar. But we could fix this by adding some black wrap. So let's try this. Let's put this around the flash to avoid this flash from bouncing around. So let's try that. Very beautiful modifier. So let's see what happens. Oof. <laughs> Did you hear that? Wow. Now this is getting closer to the projection light. No bounce in the room, the light goes straight to the product. But of course the image gets darker because we don't have the, all the bounce around in the room. So let's try to get it closer to what happens if I go to ISO 400. Yes, let's kill that one. Let's kill that one. This is without the black wrap and now it's filled up all the way out to the edge. We have a bit of a nice gradient also going on on the background there, because now it's not exactly, it's a bit off this black wrap. So I'm blocking a bit on this side. That's why we have the gradient. This is really nice actually. But now we are very, very close to the projection light. And then if you want to fill up the shadow, we don't want it to be that dark, we just add another flash, bounce up in the ceiling or through a big white diffusion, you know, big soft light. Must be very big, otherwise you will get double shadow. If you have this kind of flash with a bare bulb, you can use a black wrap to control the light. But there is other options, of course. Let's take this black wrap off. Another good thing is a snoot. This will prevent the light from spreading bounce around in the room and you will get a small light source. It's not as small as the projection. The projection is like half of this maybe. So let's put this on and aim it onto the set. Maybe something like that. And let's take a shot with a snoot. Very, very similar, I would say to the black wrap. Yeah, but I think the black wrap, the bare bulb with the black wrap has a sharper edge. The bare bulb, when you raising it up, you get a very, very tiny, tiny, tiny light source. That's why it's a bit sharper, shadow edge. But a snoot, you know, it's very close. It's very, very similar. But if you're getting a projection light, you can have so much more fun than just shooting hard light with it. You can add gobos, you know, different patterns on the background and on the set. So if you invest in a projection, that's uh, it's a good thing to have, you know. So there we are. One other thing I would like to mention about this bare bulb. If you have the space, and you move it, now it's like four meters away. If you move it like eight meters away, the light source will be even smaller. Then it will be exactly the same as the projection light. So I don't have so much space here, but if you move it back and if you have a very powerful flash, you need a lot of power to move it that far away, of course. If you have a very powerful flash and you have the space, you don't need the projection light to create this razor sharp shadow edges but when you have a small space a projection light is the best, best option because you ha can have it closer and you can zoom this uh, projection to control it alternative to projection attachment to your flash if this is the only thing you are looking for i mean this hard super hard light then i would recommend to just shoot bare bulb really and use a snoot or a black wrap, yeah, it would be very, very close to protection light. One other thing I would like to say, if you're out and you're shooting with a client, you need to know 
how to control the scene, control the shadows, control the light and everything. You're planning everything, you have you get a brief from the client and you you agreed on how the shot should look. Maybe this is my style. I like this very very contrasty moody shadows. That's my style and that's why they hire me. I'm very happy we go there and they agree on this style and everything. This actually happened to me once. You go there, agree and everything and you take like an hour, set everything up and then the client says, I don't like it. Okay, and often they have a hard time to explain what they don't like. And then you have to stay calm, <laughs> you know. They, they can put the finger on what they don't like. But if you, you ask a lot of questions, do you like the overall look or is it something with the shadows? Yes, I think the shadows are a bit too dark. They are so, so very, very dark. Yes, this is what we agreed on, so hey, come on, fuck, no. Then you just say, no problem, we will fix this. We can lift up the darkness of the shadows. And then you put on another flash. Of course, you can just try first with a card and fill up the, the shadows, but easy way, big, big, soft light. And then you will end up, where do we have the, yes, this one was a bit extreme, but maybe that's what they want. What about now? Low contrasty shot. Yes, we love this. So it's very good to know how to adjust, you know, when you're live with a client. So that's why you should try all these different things. Control the shadows. Take control over the shadows. Thank you, coffee supporters, the members of this channel, keeping the channel alive. Thank you so much. If you'd like to be a member, click the join button below to support this channel. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> As always, I will see you next time.